Imagine you're playing Pictionary and the word ship comes up. How would you draw it? Picture it in your head. How many people picture something like this? <laughs> okay, most of you. How many people maybe took it one step further and drew something of a chimney, Titanic style, like this? A few. In my house, if you ask anyone to draw a ship, this is how we'll do it. <laughs> Anyone? Both my parents are naval engineers, so of course I grew up surrounded by talks of ships. But not the cool kind, like sailboats and yachts, the uncool kind, like big metal bulk carriers. Modern ships may not be sexy, but they're actually very cool. We're so disconnected from the physical world today behind our screens, our AI chatbots, that we don't realize how the real world works. To most of us, shipping is just something you select on the last page of your Amazon order and something magically appears at your doorstep. But the truth is, ships move 90% of the world's goods. If you look around this room, the chairs, your clothes, your shoes, most got here by ship. Ships are also unbelievable engineering feats. Ships can be as long as the height of the Eiffel Tower and easily go as deep as 60 feet below the surface. But of course, as a kid, the ships that really excited me weren't those. I love those old ships with the wooden hulls, the big white sails, I would read book after book of old tales of navigation, exploration, pirates. But as I contrasted them with the ships in my parents' line of work, this frustration grew inside me. And I had to ask, Mom, where the hell are the pirates of the Caribbean ships? <laughs> where do they go? To answer this, let's go back to our Pictionary exercise. We had Sail ships, let's call them Pirates of the Caribbean. We have steamships, let's call them Titanic. And we have modern cargo ships. All of them are right. All of them are ships. What separates each of them from one another is an energy transition. And what is an energy transition? Because we hear those words a lot, but don't really think of what they mean. An energy transition is a global scale shift from one dominant energy system to another. And it has happened before. At first, society's main energy source was wood, animal power, manpower, wind. In shipping, it was all about sails. Enter Pirates of the Caribbean. Then, in the 18th to 19th century, we had a major energy transition to coal and steam engines. They powered the Industrial Revolution. In shipping, we went from sail ships powered by the wind to steam ships powered by coal. Enter Titanic. More recently, in the last century, another transition happened. This time, our main energy source went from coal to oil. Enter modern ships. And now, we're at the cusp of one of the biggest energy transitions ever, from oil to sustainable fuels and energy. This transition is massive and will happen in every industry in the world. And shipping, this slow-moving ancient sector, will be the first one to have global scale penalties, economic penalties on carbon emissions. Why? Because shipping is international by nature, it's not regulated by countries individually. Instead, it's regulated by the IMO, the International Maritime Organization, which is comprised of 176 countries who will decide together just next month, after years of negotiation, the format that these economic penalties are going to take. This will be an unprecedented regulation that can serve as a blueprint for other industries to follow, especially in hard to abate sectors. Coming from a family of naval engineers who draw ships like that, 
This issue immediately caught my attention. And in late 2023, I dropped everything to immerse myself in this subject. In the last IMO meeting in September in London, I presented my research on cost effectiveness of different candidate policies to the member countries. And I am now starting a business in sustainable marine fuels in South America. <laughs> with my mother. <laughs> Some people have family businesses. I have a family startup. All of the stress, none of the inheritance. <laughs> and even though my mom has decades of experience in this industry, she always insists that I deliver the presentations to the senior executives. Not because she wants me to develop my skills, trust me. She says that in this old traditional industries, far from the Silicon Valley, executives are not used to having young people knocking on their door, wanting to innovate. And there's so much space for innovation, especially now with the window that the energy transition is opening. And when we talk about energy transitions, there are two things we hear a lot from skeptics. And there are so many skeptics. The first one is that the cost is prohibitive. Financially, it doesn't add up. We hear people say, we won't invest in anything that relies on subsidies or regulations to work. And to that I answer, subsidies and regulations can be an extremely effective way forward to close the cost gap between fossil and green alternatives before they are cost competitive and promote innovation. This is not new. In the 19th century, in the transition from sail to steam, steamships were not competitive at all. The reason people started innovating around steamships was because England introduced the mail subsidies. So they wanted more predictability in communications. They didn't want to rely on the wind. So then they introduced subsidies for ships with steam engines carrying mail in a predictable manner. And that sparked innovation. Coming back, to the present, since the IMO started introducing regulations to decarbonize shipping and reach net zero, the pace of innovation in the industry has picked up dramatically and we're now on track to reach 20% decarbonization before the end of the decade. To the second point of the skeptics, they say the scale needed for the transition is just too big and we're moving way too slow. Where is the progress? That's one thing about energy transitions. They're not as revolutionary as you might think. They're not an app that you can develop in isolation, launch, and disrupt the industry overnight. You cannot make an energy transition from your garage. <laughs> First of all, technology by itself does nothing. Technology has to evolve, but it has to co-evolve with changes in infrastructure, in policy, and that takes time. There's no one solution that comes ready to disrupt the market. It takes time, it's not linear. Instead, you have a series of niche innovations that come about around the same time, creating this high density of innovations, and most fail. But maybe one of these innovations will link up with another new technology, which will link up with a change in policy, they will trigger changes in business models or in user behavior. And then this solution starts gaining traction until it's finally able to disrupt the current regime and create a reconfiguration. In the 19th century, steamships started as a niche innovation to be used to help dock in ports or in canals where you didn't have wind. But they were weird, they were inefficient. So you have to develop screw propulsion. You had to change the whole material from wood to steel because of the weight and the vibrations. You could make the ships bigger, but that meant making the ports deeper to receive those ships. That takes time. The transition took a century to happen. But little by little, steamships started to become more competitive and replace sail ships to create a new energy regime. And goodbye, Pirates of the Caribbean. <laughs> A transition of that scale doesn't happen often. And we're living one right now. 
We do need changes in regulation to make it happen. And we do need a lot of co-evolving innovation to create a new energy regime. In shipping, we're looking at a future of multiple fuels. We're experimenting with ammonia, ethanol, methanol, biodiesel. But it's not just the energy source itself. We have to change the engines. We have to change the whole design. We have to change the ports. We have to change the way we make decisions. And we're just at the beginning. In every industry, we're just at the beginning. We're in that moment of high density of innovations that haven't started to converge. Who knows, in 30 years from now, how we will be drawing a ship. I want you to look at the past and understand that the energy transition is more than just words. It's an incredible collective problem solving exercise that has happened before and will happen again. I want you to look at the future and realize that there is a major difference this time around. We don't have a century. Each year we delay the energy transition can generate irreversible impact on Earth. That's why now, in the present, we need our best minds working on this. We need you. Investors, bet on the energy transition. Policymakers, create regulations to close the cost gap to green alternatives. And innovators, join this problem solving exercise. I invite you to join this challenge. I invite you to step out of the garage, into the real world, and help draw this future together. Thank you. Thank <laughs> you.